All right, welcome Math 11 learners to lecture 3.4. This is the last lecture over new material for the semester. I will be doing a quiz review for Unit 6 tomorrow, um, and that will be it. It will be final exam time next week. I still have quite a few of you scheduled to complete your homework help videos, so I'm looking forward to those for the rest of this week, and I have a couple scheduled for next week during final exam time. Um, don't forget uh, that in my math lab under the homework tab, the very last section of homework listed is actually not required of you. It's final exam practice. Um, tomorrow is the deadline to sign up for your final exam, so please make sure that you have registered to take your final exam and that you're practicing with those practice problems um, at the end of the homework section in my math lab. All right, uh, today's lesson is going to have us kind of putting everything we've learned about logarithms uh, together. Uh, we're going to be solving exponential and logarithmic equations. It's going to be kind of a short lesson, um, so it'll basically be just me giving you some steps and then working through a few uh, equations for you. Uh, let's go ahead and get going. Okay, so the first type of equation that we talk about solving in this section are exponential equations. And um, this first type of exponential equation is a very special type of equation. And it is the type that you can express each side of the equation as like bases. So this is not going to always be the case with exponential equations, um, but it's the first time we're going to talk about. So first thing we need to do is establish the, the uh, principle that if you can express each side of an equation as like bases, then you are able to equate the exponents because anything always equals itself. And if you've got the same bases being raised to whatever power and, and you're calling them equal, then those complete exponential expressions have to be equal. That is the reflexive property that anything always equals itself. So um, the first step in this process of solving these types of equations is to rewrite the equation as um, expressions of like basis. So you want to write it in the, form, in the form b to the m equals b to the n. Then you're going to set m and n equal. It could be various types of equations at that point, linear, quadratic, whatever. Um, and you solve for the variable. So an example, I have 2 raised to the 3x minus 8. And notice the base on the left-hand side is 2. And the right-hand side of the equation, 16, can also be expressed as a power of 2. So I can use this method to solve this equation. First thing I do is rewrite 2 to the 3x minus 8 equals 2 to the fourth power. And then I equate the exponents. Since that's true, that means that 3x minus 8 had to equal 4. And then I have a nice linear equation to solve after that. So I'll add 8 to both sides and get 3x is 12, divide by 3 on both sides, and I end up with x is you always want to check your equations because, you know, sometimes we have extraneous solutions show up. Um, so you always want to check your equations, and why not check when you have the ability to? And with any equation, you always have the ability to check by plugging in the solution that you found for the variable and simplifying both sides of the equation. Okay, so um, that is 2 to the 12 minus 8 equals 16 
2 to the 4th equals 16, so 16 equals 16. Check. All right. Let's move on to these two examples here. So with this first one, this first example, we have 5 to the 3x minus 6 equals 125. 125 can be expressed as a power of 5, so that's my first step. Three, 5 to the 3x minus 6 equals 5 cubed. That means 3x minus 6 equals 3. Funky looking 3 there, sorry. I'm going to add 6 to both sides to solve for the variable. And now I have 3x is 9, divide both sides by 3. And I get x is 3. I can check that. By plugging in my solution. 5 to the 3, so this is a little barrier between the check. And I'll use a different color to plug into the check. I'll use a blue. 3 times 3 minus 6 equals 125. So that's 5 to the 9 minus 6. And that's 5 cubed. And sure enough, 125 equals 125. So it checks out. All right. Next one up over here. I have 8 raised to the x plus 2 and 4 raised to the x minus 3. Well, both 4 and 8 are powers of 2. So this one's a little different. Because so I have to transform both sides of the equation to get them as like bases. So this is 2 cubed raised to the x plus 2. And this is 2 squared raised to the x minus 3. Well, according to exponent rules, when you raise a power to another power, you multiply the exponents. So to set these equal, I have 3 times x plus 2 equals 2 times x minus 3. Do some distribution here, here and here, here and here. And I have 3x plus 6 equals 2x minus 6. Okay. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides and subtract 6 from both sides. So I have a zero pair there and a zero pair there. And I'm left with x is equal to negative 12. I definitely want to check. So I have 8 raised to the negative 12 plus 2 equals 4 raised to the negative 12 minus 3. Okay, so I have 8 raised to the negative 10th power, that's a negative 10, equals 4 raised to the negative 15th power. I don't want to calculate what 8 to the 10th is and throw it down in the denominator, so I'm just going to simplify these further. Let me put a barrier between my check and my problem. All right, so I'm going to rewrite 8 as 2 cubed. And that's to the 10 is freezing. 
to the negative tenth power of 4, which is 2 squared to the negative 15. So again, when I raise a power to another power, I multiply. So this is 2 to the negative 30 equals 2 to the negative 30. And I'm now to the point where I have my true statement. So I'm good to go on um, both of those. Moving ahead. Okay, so you may have a situation where you can't express both sides of an exponential equation at, as the same base. Um, so we have to have a method, no ma'am, no ma'am, sorry, my dogs are going crazy, it's raining out, but they can't go outside. Um, so uh, we have to have a method of dealing with exponential equations when they can't be expressed as like bases. So that's why we have another method for solving exponential equations, and we use logarithms to solve exponential equations. So the um, steps here are to isolate the exponential expression on one side of the equation. We're going to take the log or the ln, the natural log, of both sides of the equation. And then you're going to simplify using your properties of logarithms. So um, we have um, the log of m of m times n is equal to log base b of m plus log base b of n. We have log base b of m divided by n equals log base b of m minus log base b of n. We have log base b of m to the x equals x times log base b of m. And then I'll just throw this one in there too, your change of base formula. Log base b of m is the same thing as the log of m divided by the log of b. And this holds true for ln. The natural log is log. She used common log. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I used log of any base um, to cover common log and natural log there. Um, so usually what I do is if my exponential expression is of a numerical base, I'll use log if it's of base e. Then I'll use ln. Oh, sorry, the rain has got me tired. Um, so it doesn't matter which one you use. And um, you can take the log of both sides of an equation, and it remains an equation. So we use that that principle to um, to do this. Um, so uh, here. We have 5 raised to the x power is, um, is 134. I'm going to come in and take the log of both sides. Remains an equation. And now I'm going to use my logarithm properties to pull that variable x out front. So that's using this property right here. So now I have x times log of 5 equals the log of 134. I'm trying to isolate the variable. So now I divide both sides by the log of 5. 
and that gets it off of there. And then I have, I'm left with x is equal to log 134 divided by log of 5. Now remember, I, I told you in the last um, lesson, log of 134 divided by log of 5 is very different from the log of 134 divided by 5. Um, and if you are unclear about what I'm talking about, go and rewatch the 3.3 lecture. Um, at this point, I could leave it like this to have it exact. My math lab is probably going to ask for a decimal approximation. So I need to go grab my calculator real quick. I'll be right back. So, I'm going to put this into my calculator. you got to be very careful to close off your parentheses with these. So, the log of 134 and parentheses divided by the log of 5 in parentheses. And I get that... X is approximately uh, 3.04. Um, so we can check this. Now, it's not going to be exact because we're rounding here, but you'll see that when I raise 5 to the 3.04, it'll be really close to 134. So think about it, 5 raised to the third power is 125. So raising it to a little more will bump it up just a little bit. So um, to check this, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to raise, go back. You always go back to your original equation when you're checking. 5 to the 3.04 and see if I get close to 134. Once again, it's not going to be equal because I had to round, but it'll be close. So 5 raised to the 3.04 gives us 133.31, which is approximately 134. So you're good on that. All right, um, next problem here. 10 to the x equals 8,000. If I take the log of both sides, I can now use my property, my power property of logarithms that will bring that x down out of the exponent into the realm that we like for it to be living in. So x times log 10 equals log of 8,000. Now, this one's even easier because the log of 10, that's asking what can I raise 10 to to get 10. That's just 1. So this is really x times 1 there is the log of 8,000. Well, x times 1 is just x. So x is approximately, well, I just do the log of 8,000 in my calculator. Uh, approximately 3.90 if you're rounding to the hundredths place. And so I'll check that for you. I have 10 raised to the 3.9 equaling 8,000. So 10 raised to the 3.9 9 gives me um, 7,943.28, approximately 8,000. I had to truncate that number big time, so um, that's why we're so different with that answer, but 
Um, just know if you're having to round, it can be close, and, and that should tell you that you did it correctly. You found the correct solution, so, or you found the solution. Saying correct solution is redundant, redundant, because um, a solution is what makes the statement true. So, all right. So here's another one. Um, notice with this next one, our base is E. So I'm going to take the ln of both sides when I'm ready to. But before I take the ln of both sides, I want to isolate that um, that expression, that exponential expression, just like I did in the first one. So here I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And I'll be left with 40e to the 0 0.6x equals 234. And I want to divide that 40 off. I could leave it there and it would make it much more painstaking, but you might as well isolate the, the exponential expression as much as you can before you take a lot of both sides. So now I have e to the 0.6x equals, I'm going to leave this as 234 over 40. <laughs> Just because I don't want to have to round in the middle of my, in the middle of my problem here. That creates round, even more round off error every time you round in a problem. So I want to do that as little as possible. I'm going to take the natural log of both sides this time because um, E is my base. So that will allow me to pull that exponent out front. I've got 0 0.6x times the ln of e, which we like to see ln of e show up, and that equals the ln of 234 divided by 40. Um, ln of e is just 1. So what I really have is 0.6x equaling ln of 234 over 40, and I need to get that 0 0.6 off to isolate my variable by dividing both sides by 0 0.6. x equals ln of 234 over 40 all divided by 0 0.6, so I can get an approximation of that. Be careful putting this into your calculator. So ln of 234 divided by 40, in parentheses, divided by 0 0.6. And I get approximately 2.94. So I'll check that. Get 40e 0 0.6 times 2.94. And that should be approximately 237. Okay. So 40 times E raised to the 0.6 times 2.94 in parentheses. And I get... 233.43 is approximately 237. Once again, we're a little bit off because we rounded. All right. So this next one's a little bit more involved because 
I've got my exponential expressions isolated, but I have an exponential expression with a variable on both sides. So I'm going to take the log of both sides, and that's going to cause both sets of exponents on both sides to come down. Okay, so I have x minus 2 times the log of 5, and that equals Two x plus three times the log of four. So we're trying to isolate the variable here. So I um, need to get that log of five. off of the left-hand side. And I'm going to divide those sides by 2x plus 3 to get that off of that side. So it comes off of there and comes off of there. Now I'm left with x minus 2 over 2x plus 3 equals log 4 divided by log 5, um, okay, so um, I can rewrite log 4 divided by log 5 as one logarithm, and actually, let me scratch this and go back. I that I could have done this a lot easier. Yep. Let me um, let me restart this one. Sometimes you got to be clever, and on a rainy Tuesday afternoon, I don't feel so clever sometimes. So do over, do over. All right. So, um, okay, so here we go. So I do want to take the log or the ln of both sides. I'll take the log. It doesn't matter, though. And that's going to bring each of these down out of the exponent. So now I have x minus 2 times the log of 5. And that equals 2x plus 3 times the log of 5. Here's, I'm sorry, times the log of 4. Here's where you have to be clever, and this is, this is where I messed up on the first attempt with this. You have to distribute this log. Remember, you're trying to get all of your x terms on one side. So since I have an x term on both sides, if I distribute that, then I can pull that other x term to the other side and then work with my logarithmic properties or factoring to help me finish solving this. So at this point, I have x 
log 5 minus 2 log 5 equals 2x log 4 plus 3 log 4. So notice the negative 2 log 5 and the 3 log 4. Those are just numbers. So those can go on the other side. And then I need my x terms on um, one side together as well. So I am going to add 2 log 5 to both sides. And I'm going to subtract 2x log 4 from both sides. So there's a 0 pair there and a 0 pair there. And now I have x log 5 minus 2x log 4. And that equals 3 log 4 plus 2 log 5. All right, I have a common factor of x in both of my terms on the left-hand side. So I'm going to factor that x out because, remember, I'm trying to isolate it. So I'm going to factor an x out, and I'm left with log 5 minus 2 log and that equals 3 log 4 plus 2 log 5. Now I'm going to divide that entire factor of log 5 minus 2 log 4 off of both sides. And that will isolate the x on the left-hand side. And I'm going to have to be very careful with what, how I put this right-hand side into my calculator. This is what it's going to look like when I put it in. I'm going to write it all in one big string. So I'll just show you. I'm going to have to put parentheses around the top and then divide and put parentheses around the bottom. So I'm going to write it down here so that I have room to write it straight across so it'll look like what it's going to look like when you're going to put it into your calculator. All right. I'm going to put in parentheses to start my numerator. 3 log, it's going to open up a parentheses, 4 in that parentheses, plus 2 log, it's going to open a parenthesis, 5 in parenthesis. Now I need to end my numerator divided by start my denominator. Log, it's going to open a parenthesis, 5, close it, minus 2 log, it's going to open a parenthesis, 4, close that parenthesis, close your denominator. So that's what I'm about to put in my into my calculator and I will get, let me change this actually to the wavy equals, I'll get an approximation here. Okay, 3 log 4 plus 2 log 5 in parentheses, in parentheses, divided by, open parentheses for the denominator, log 5 minus 2 log 4, close parenthesis, close parenthesis. And I get it is approximately negative 6.34. We'll go ahead and take it out another couple decimal places, 3429. So I'm going to check in this area right here. So I have 5 raised to the negative 6.3429 minus 2, and that has to equal 4 raised to the 2 times, I'm going to plug in my value, 
negative 6.3429 in parentheses plus 3. Okay, so that's equal to 5 raised to the, okay, so negative 6.3429 minus 2 is negative 8.3429, and that equals 4 raised to the negative 6.3429 times 2, which is negative 12.6858 plus 3. I'm going to add 3 to that. Okay, so I have 5 to the negative 8.3429 equaling 4 to the negative 9.6858. So I'm going to get approximations of each of those sides. 5 raised to the negative 8.3429. And that is approximately 1.4742 and 4 raised to the negative 9.6858 is approximately, oh, by the way, this is e to the negative 6. So we're talking about 0 .00000. 000. So e to the negative 6 means I have six decimal places that I need to account for. So that's really 0 0.00000142. Same thing on the opposite side. I get approximately 1.4742. For 2e to the negative 6 power. So um, it checks out. I know that's a really long one, but this just goes to show you, A, you got to know your properties. You've got to know your definitions of, of a logarithmic function and exponential function. You've got to know your exponent rules, um, logarithmic properties, and things like that. And sometimes you just got to have some cleverness, too. So. Moving forward. So using the definition of a logarithm to solve logarithmic equations, what we're going to do, um, first you want to express your equation in the form of log base b of x is y. So you want to isolate the logarithm, basically. And then you want to switch between your forms. You want to go from log base b of x is y back to your exponential form, which is b to the y is x. And um, then use that to solve for the variable. Always check because you may have extraneous solutions here. So I want to isolate my logarithmic expression first. So in this one, I need to divide 3 off of both sides. And now I'm left with the ln of 2x is 4. So I'm just going to rewrite that so you can see the base here. Once again, the natural log is log understood base e of 2x is 4. So now I want to switch back into exponential form. You always start at the base, raised to the is, equals the of. So this is e to the fourth power is 2x. And then I'm just isolating the variable now. Divide 2 off of both sides. 
and I get that x equals e to the fourth over 2, and we can get an approximation. x is approximately, okay, so e to the fourth divided by 2 is approximately 27.2. Nine nine one. We need to check it. So um, three ln of two times. Plug in here. Twenty seven point two nine nine one. should equal approximately 12. Okay, so 3 times the ln of 2 times 27.2991 gives me 12.00000275. So that is approximately 12. Check. All right, we have two more equations to work through. All right, here, so these are other ones that you have to be clever with, and you have to use your logarith properties of logarithms to sort of work backwards through these, to get these into one exponent, I'm sorry, one logarithmic expression on one side, so isolating that logarithmic expression and um, then turning it back into exponential form. So notice that you have addition happening here, which means since these are logs of the same base, that I can put them back together with multiplication. So I'm condensing. Remember in that last lesson I told you there's a reason we're learning to expand and condense. Here's one of the reasons. So condensing this back, I have log base 2 of x times x minus 7. And that's the log of that whole thing right there. And that equals 3. Turning that back into exponential form. I start at the base, raised to the is equals the of. So I have 2 cubed is equal to x times x minus 7. I've got distribution to do on the right hand side. And I can simplify 2 cubed as 8. So 8 equals x squared minus 7x. This is now a quadratic equation, so I need to get it equal to zero. And I can either factor and use the zero product property or use the quadratic formula to solve. This one's factorable, so I'm going to factor it and use the zero product property. That's a two there. So x squared minus 7x minus 8. So I'm looking for the factors of the 8 that add to make negative 7. And that is negative 8 and positive 1. Using my zero product property, x minus 8 equals 0, x plus 1 equals 0, x is 8, x is negative 1. Okay, so now I've got to check these. Once again, I told you, you may have extraneous solutions show up. So I have, I'll try x equals 8 first. So uh, log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8 minus 1 should equal 3. Log base 2 of 8 is 3 plus log base 2 of 8 minus, I'm sorry, 8 minus 7 is log base 2 of 1. Log base 2 of 1 is 0, so this is 3 plus 0 equals 3. 8 checks out, so I'm good with keeping 8 
as one of my solutions. I've got to check negative one. So um, log base two of negative one plus log base two of eight minus negative one equals three. Well, right here, log base two of negative one is no real number. There's nothing that you can raise two to and get, a positive two to, and get negative one. Not ever going to happen. So you discount negative one as a valid solution. That is an extraneous solution. The only solution to that particular um, equation is uh, positive eight. So be careful with those. All right, this last one, same thing. I've got addition happening between these two logarithms, so I put them back together, condense them through multiplication. So this is log of x times x minus 3, and that's equaling 1. Don't forget when you don't see a base, that's understood base 10 there. That's the common log. So 10 to the first power equals x times x minus 3. The 10 equals, I'm going to distribute, x squared minus 3x, 0. Once again, I have a quadratic, x squared minus 3x minus 10. This is factorable. x minus 5, x plus 2, 0 product property. They won't always come out to be quadratics like that, but they may. So here x is 5, here x is negative 2, got to check them. Okay, so log of 5 plus log of 5 minus 3 should equal 1. I'm going to do this in my head. Well, I'm going to do it on paper without touching my calculator because I know my properties of logarithms. This is log of 5 plus log of 2. I can now multiply those. So this is log of 5 times 2, which is 10. Oops. Up the head of the game there. That's just be one on that side. And sure enough, when you raise 10 to the first power, you get 10. So this is 1 equals 1. Check. So I can say that 5 is a valid solution here. Now I need to check negative 2. So log of negative 2, and I can stop there. That's no real number because there's nothing that I can raise 10 to to get negative 2. 10 to the what equals negative 2? Nothing. So we want to block out that negative 2 is a solution there. All right, that's it, my friends. So um, Unit 6 quiz will open on uh, this Thursday. I'll have a quiz review tomorrow afternoon, even though I don't normally do a lecture on Wednesday afternoon. I need to fit it in because you need to get this quiz done so that you can be ready for your final exam. Final exams open Monday. Um, you should have your scheduled time. It's going to be different for each of you. Um, and make sure you get that scheduled before 5 o'clock tomorrow because they will be closing the registration for final exams out. Um, so also registration for fall is open, so make sure you get registered for fall classes as well. 
Thank you guys. Um, I hope that these lectures have been helpful for you this semester. I've enjoyed doing them. Uh, this is the most interaction I've ever been able to have with my online classes, so I've been really excited about it. Uh, just shoot me an email if you have any questions. Have a great day.